Hey, good morning, guys. Or I say good afternoon. Oh, here we are with the mighty Gator Unleashed again. We're on a Monday. We're on Labor Day 2022. I uh, want to welcome all you guys to the channel. Welcome all you new subscribers. Um, really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate you older older subscribers hanging in here with me. Uh, try to bring a lot of fun and good things to the channel. Fun and good things is hard to find in today's world, it seems, but it's out there if you look. Oh, um, we'll talk about some very simple things here, uh, and I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes if there's any way possible. Um, I've been putting up sheetrock this morning, and that's not fun. I don't enjoy that. But when you're an old working man, um, you know, you, we don't lay around and wait for somebody to do things for us. We just, we just do it. That's the way the world is. Uh, anyway, talking about today... Your carry gun versus your range gun. And I've kind of touched on some things like this, but I've never done a video specifically on it, I don't think. If I have, then I'm going to be super repetitive. I was just thinking about this this morning while I was working. Um, now, people may think, if you can find a gun that you carry that you also enjoy at the range, uh, man, you, you've hit the jackpot. You've got a really sweet situation there. And that's good. You don't need to, unless you just want, you don't need to buy another Firearm. You can save your money. You can buy more ammo. Ammo's where it's at. Um, but man, that's, that's two different worlds. There's no way to stress how different those two worlds are. Um, I know many times I've touched on how much I love a 1911 at the, uh, at the range. But, you know, you'd, man, a 1911 trying to carry all day, uh, you just can't do it. This is a Ruger LC9. This is a very old Ruger LC9. This is the very first ones that came out. That firearm was loaded. That's my carry weapon. Firearm is now unloaded. I'm going to mention safety right fast, guys. Anytime you see a gun anywhere, I don't care if it's a policeman. I don't care if it's somebody that's owned a gun shop for 47 years. I don't care who it is until you get your hands on that firearm and clear it yourself physically and then double check your own self. Assume that gun is loaded and assume if you pull the trigger, it's going to fire. And if that's the case, that bullet will hit whatever it's aiming at. If there's someone standing there... Uh, 75 feet down the aisle way or something looking at a if there's an old lady there looking at a at a scarf you could kill that person you have to practice firearm safety uh, I, I just can't stress it enough I, I don't know it just drives me nuts all these discharges of things going on in our world today I carry these hollow points um, these are the brand ammo. Oh, Lord God, I forgot. It's a blue box. I, I had them on the channel not long ago. I have tried them through two of my guns that I kind of go back and forth on carrying. But anyway, back to the topic here. I'm trying to get, I get I'm bad to get carried away here because I like to talk. Oh, my wife won't listen to me. So when I get on here, you can't talk back to me. So I can say anything I want to without getting something thrown at me or hit um, or cussed at or flipped off. Uh, of course, now you can punish me in the comments, but that's all right. That don't hurt as bad as when she, she's got a skillet. That's rough, buddy. I mean, it's rough on you. But anyway, this gun here, the old Ruger LC9, this is hammer fired. It's got the worst trigger of any, I believe, of any gun I've ever fired in my life. This gun is the least fun firearm at the range. It is the hardest to shoot. It is the hardest to hit anything with. I can go and shoot like 25 rounds through it and get feeling pretty decent with the trigger. Um, but then when I go for a month and a half and don't shoot it, I have to start all over. It's just, especially because I shoot other guns in between that period of time that have great triggers. Good range guns. This is a gun. And you may say, well, Gator, why in the world would you carry something like that why would you want to carry a gun that, that you struggle with the trigger on, um, that you that's very inaccurate at, at 20 yards? I, I mean, I, I struggle to hit a paper plate with this at 20 yards off, offhanded. I mean, just absolutely struggle. 
I can do it somewhat consistently if I go and I really apply myself in practice and put a box of rounds through it, a box of ammo through it. Um, I can't go every month and a half and come out with this pistol and hit that paper plate at 20 yards much consistently. I mean, I'll, I'll hit it. Now, I can hit a, I can hit a, silhouette, a silhouette almost 100% of the time at 20 yards. It's very, very inaccurate, poor trigger, hard to shoot pistol, for me at least. Now, there may be other people that doesn't mean anything to anyone else. Everybody's different. There may be people that can shoot this better than something like the Glock 48 that I own or the Taurus G3C that I own and really, really can shoot very, I mean, I feel very impressed at my own self sometimes. Yeah, I do. I really do. This though doesn't do that. So you say, Gator, why in the world would you carry something like that? Why, why would you carry it? Well, there's many reasons. The first and foremost, number one reason, this gun is just the most comfortable gun to put on my side and carry that I have ever touched, that I have ever picked up on any gun store. It's just amazing. i got to get centered up here. I want you all to catch all my beauty. It's amazing how well this gun fits me. This gun fits my hand perfectly. It's just, I have no problem reaching the trigger. It has an external safety. Um, and it's just very easy. It's right there in my hand. I can come out and flip that off, flip it back on. It's just, this gun is just, it's like they took my hand and molded this pistol to fit it. That alone is reason to carry it. Um, now, also, I'm not going out looking to get in a gunfight or a shootout of any kind, any way, shape, form, or fashion. Am I looking to get in a shootout? I want to have a firearm with me, and I feel good with this firearm with me because we live in a world where you just never know when somebody's going to try to kidnap you, kidnap your daughter. Um, I've just never seen a nation declining as fast as our nation is declining right now in terms of morals and values um, and, lo and just simple logic. Um, so I'm going to have a firearm. Now, if you could pick me out of, uh, if you could just take and teleport me from the shooting range into a gunfight situation or into a self-defense situation, yeah, I would probably take my Glock 45 or, or the Beretta um, there is just some amazing weapons. Or if you was going to go that far, I would take my Kel-Tec Sub-2000. <clears throat> Those weapons are not easy to carry for me. This doesn't apply to you. Um, I, I think that most of us would, would want the same things from our carry weapon. I think comfort would be very high on about anybody's list. But some people really really want more rounds and things of that nature. So... I can't tell you guys what you want on that on that aspect of, of, of carrying a, a pistol for self-defense. Um, what I can do is try to promote some thought process and tell you about my experiences and what I do. And that is simply, I carry my least favorite range gun on my hip almost all the time. And I have continued to buy new guns. Uh, I bought the Ruger LC, Lord God, what's it called? Is it the LCP, the little 380? I've had it on my channel. Uh, I'm bad to forget the names. It's the LCP 380 is what it's called, yeah. And I bought the one with the red trigger, and it's actually got the metal sights. It's the it's the higher-end LCP 380. <clears throat> when you buy one of those pistols, at least when I bought mine, none of the factory magazines work right in them. You have to manipulate them to get them to work. So I bought a Matco, or what is it? It begins with M. I bought an aftermarket MagPro. I bought an aftermarket magazine. It worked perfect for mine. <clears throat> then I got Capernaum. And on the factory mag, that little notch right there, the Ruger LCP is the same way. That little notch is just off a little bit. I took and filed that down just a hair. <clears throat> I compared the two mags. I filed that down just a hair. Now I've got two mags for it that work perfect. And my dad owns a gun shop, and he had 50 of those pistols in stock. And I literally checked every one of them. None of them, the magazine worked right from the factory. Not a single one. It wasn't something that you couldn't make work. When you put it in, you'd have to push back on it to get it to go up and unlock. And it would, but it wasn't right. And I never contacted Ruger about any of this. I'm sure Ruger would make it right because uh, I've dealt with Ruger before and they've been outstanding in their customer service. And they make outstanding firearms. 
This was the very first gun I got when I decided I wanted something smaller to carry. Ten minutes already. Um, I graduated. I turned 18 years old in December of 1988. <clears throat> my very first pistol, my very first pistol of my own was a Ruger P89. And I think my dad gave it to me. Um, now, the way things like that work with an old country boy, Probably everywhere, probably everybody everywhere, but I can't, I can't speak for anyone but myself and my friends and people around here. Whatever you start your life with, be it a Ford, a Honda, a Ruger, you're partial to that from then on. So later I got a Ruger P95, and I carried it for years, and I've always carried it outside my waist. I've always, I've never had a problem. I've never been ashamed to, to exercise my right to bear arms. Um, but up around, whenever these came out, I saw this. My dad had it as a gun shop. And buddy, it instantly, as I touched on, it was made for my hand. And it was, I get $424 for this years ago. And it wouldn't bring $224 right now, probably. Um, but it's the most easy to carry. It's just, I got this old cheap holster. I can't even tell I've got this with me. I can carry this and not even tell it's on my side. I love the safety. Um, it, it just works for me, and I, I don't know how to over. I don't want to try to overstress that anymore. But the point to my video is, when you simplify things to the most basic, when you get things down to the most simple basic level, you you can you can kind of start to see why it's not insane for someone to say that their least favorite range gun is their favorite carry gun. If it's not with you, you can't defend you and yours with it. You, you can't. You just can't do it. I've only got eight rounds, seven in the mag, one in the chamber. According to statistics, woo man, statistics. According to stats, <laughs> almost any type of situation where there's a gunfight that breaks out, there's only three or four rounds fired. Now, if I get in a situation, they're going to have to have me pushed into a corner. They're going to have to be really aggressive, really... Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to avoid having to shoot somebody. If I do, it's going to be close range. Um, so the inaccuracy and things of that nature, I, I don't see that being a problem. I don't think I'm going to need more than one round. Might need to. Don't know. That, that, no, I don't think anybody can answer that. You don't know how you're going to react if something horrible was to happen. Um, this gun through, I know I've had it. I, I know I've had this firearm 15 years. I, I believe probably at least 12 years. Somewhere in that range. 12 years wouldn't miss it much. I bought this new. I've got it wrote down. I should have looked before I done my video. I should have been prepared, shouldn't I? I should have done my homework. Um this, is ne this gun has never had a misfire. This gun has never had a failure to feed. It's never had a failure to extract. This gun has performed 100% flawless, and I, ha I have put a huge amount of rounds through it. I've had friends that have come and shot it, and nobody else likes it at the range either. It's not just me. <laughs> um, but when you put it on your side, and I keep buying these other guns. I bought Glock 26, which I really like it. I've carried it quite a bit. But I always go back to this. I always go back to this just because all those other firearms I carry, they begin to wear on me. They begin to get heavy and, and bur they, they begin to burden me just being there. Um, and then you catch yourself going to jump in your truck and you're like, well, I'm just running over here to IGA. Um, I, you know, I ain't going to need no pistol. But that's what gets you killed. So I, I'll just keep going back to this old Ruger LC9. Now, I bought a Ruger EC9S, which is the new and improved version of this, so they say. Striker fired, much better trigger. I bought it brand new at Center Target in London, Kentucky. I walked straight around the corner to their shooting range, and the, the, the third shot, it had uh, failure. It consistently had failures and misfires. I worked through everything in the world. Ruger sent me new parts. It was the same pistol, exactly the same size. It, again, fit my hand perfect in every way. It was awesome. Striker fired, had a better trigger than this, had the same safety. It just simply would not work. Um, I sent it to Ruger. 
Ruger repaired it. They sent it back to me. They put a whole new top end on it with a note saying they'd fired 45 rounds of Black Hills 9mm 115 grain ammo without a problem. I took it to the shooting range and I put rounds through it like crazy and it worked perfect. However, I was blue with that pistol and I could not come to terms with it. So I wound up trading it in on the Glock 48. And uh, that's ancient history now. And I love the Glock 48. But recently I have considered getting another one of these because if I can get an EC9S that works as reliable as this one is, you know, you want your, you want this to be 100% reliable. Oh, that's, that's what I demand is 100% reliability. Um, if I could get an EC9S and I'm sure what I had was just a rare thing, I would probably retire this and carry it just simply because I would sort of have the best of both worlds. I would have a gun I could take to the range and enjoy and be accurate with. You know, it makes you feel good when you hit that old bullseye. It just, you know, it just makes you puff right up, and especially if your wife starts watching and stuff, you know, it gets her a little tore up. She's just like, you know, what a man. Um, so you got the best of both worlds if, you, if I could make that happen. And, and I'm going to watch. They're, they're reasonable. The, the one I bought was 259 They're more than that now. Um, but I've got a couple on my mind. I've got a couple inside at an auction I'm watching. So I'll probably try another Ruger EC9, and I, I'm totally a Ruger fan. Love Ruger. Don't know what was wrong with the one I had, but they did fix it. Regardless, I went on too long here, guys. I want to touch on here. The one thing i done to this gun, this right here, see how it's shiny? I need to blue that, I guess. Years and years and years ago, I had this in my pocket. Yeah, this would even fit in my pocket. I just love this. Carried it for so much. But one day, I got this out of my pocket, and this had pushed and released the mag, and this has the mag release safety. When your mag's released, the gun won't fire. So I got to thinking, if I had that in my pocket and went to grab it, you know, this stuff happens in the blink of an eye. If I went to grab it and that was released, well, I couldn't pull the trigger. I'd be a sitting duck. So I took that, and I filed that down. I took and worked, uh, methodically worked on that, meticulously worked on that and got it filed down. No problem. This is loaded. I'm not going to chamber one. And it's still no problem. Got mag. With my right hand at least. Works just fine. Uh, it's actually recessed now. There's no way that you're going to push that or that I'm going to push that and, and disconnect my magazine. While this is in my pocket. Of course, I carry this holster now anyway, always, 100%. But, I, I mean, I still may carry it. I won't say I'll never carry it in my pocket again. But, anyway, I'm up to 17 minutes. I've almost doubled what I said I wanted to do, guys. See what I do? Get mad carried away. Guys, y'all enjoy your Labor Day. Oh, everybody have a great rest of the week. Stay safe. Please practice firearm safety. Please promote firearm safety. Um... We don't want people being shot and killed accidentally. We don't want guns discharging, going off. Uh, we don't want uh, we don't want to give those situations to the left. That's that's ammunition they use to uh, to strip us of our rights. Um, let's try to be open-minded and and uh, consider some possible. Uh, let's see how to say it. Logical. Supervision of uh, gun shows and things of that nature. I, I don't know what we're going to do with these people that lay loaded guns out on tables and stuff. Uh, they're, they're killing us. They're destroying our, our rights and freedoms. And we need our right to bear arms. Women, if there's any women watching this channel, please get you a firearm and keep it with you all the time. Master this firearm. We've got this lady in Tennessee, this jogger that is almost certainly dead because she went jogging for some reason at 4 a.m. in the morning by herself. <clears throat> you got to uh, we have the right to defend ourselves we have the right to bear arms do it do it there's bad people out there it can happen to you anyway guys everybody enjoy your weekend enjoy your labor day enjoy this week we've got a uh, hopefully the next weekend won't be so rainy it's been a bad weather wise weekend but anyhow you guys take care catch you on next video